Hello, this is Steve at GreenFuelH2O.com. Today what we're going to do is we're going to use our hydrogen generators to compress hydrogen into our storage tank here. In the last video, we used a compressor in reverse to pull a vacuum on the tank and get out everything that's in this tank. We don't want any oxygen in this tank when we're putting hydrogen in. We want to keep the purity of the hydrogen above 96.5 to 97% so that it'll be safe to compress. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this tank up to our generators and we're going to go ahead and fill it up. Alright, we'll go ahead and turn it on. Okay, and what I have here is I've got a tube that I'm going to connect to the generators and then it's connected to a gauge so we'll know what our comp compression is at and then on the other side of that our tube will hook into here that goes to the tank. I'm going to go ahead and hook that up there. And this goes over here. You'll see the needle start to move there a little bit. So I haven't opened up the tank yet. That shows you there it's building pressure. I pressure tested all the way up to 50 psi so that is the max pressure for these generators and all the fittings all the hoses all the press fittings were all good for up to 50 psi they're actually good up way higher than that but for this test we just made sure that we could get 50 psi so what I'm going to do now I'm going to open up the tank and the tank has a vacuum in it so it's going to want to pull gas in through this whole system and I'll show you why it's important to have this check valve back here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the valve and then turn Let me show you why the check valve is important. Okay, on our water gas separator here, there's a vacuum on all these lines. So what it's going to try and do is it's going to try and pull air up through this line. It'll suck it up in through here because there's a valve that closes when this stone goes down. But when the stone's up, it, can, it lets air through. So air would come through here, and then go out this tube, down through here, and out this, and into our tank. So you want to make sure you have a check valve right here. Because we only want hydrogen in our tank. Okay, so I expect this is going to take... To get this up to 20 psi, we're going to get up to 20 psi, and then we're going to use our hydrogen analyzer over here, and we're going to test the purity of the gas. Make sure we have it above our 96.5 to 97%. That's going to take quite a while to do, so I want to pause this video, and uh, we'll come back when we have it under pressure. All right, we have hit our 20 PSI mark. And I've got the analyzer set up here. It's heating right now. It takes 45 minutes to heat, and then it'll show you the purity of the hydrogen. 
So what we have to do, we have to unhook this line and we're gonna hook it in over here. And this just, it just simply goes through this meter back around and then into this dryer and then into the machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that up right now. All right, I'll go ahead and shut the tank off, shut the ball valve. I'm gonna turn off the generator. Just connect our fitting here. And hook our fitting into here. Right here, there's a flow meter. We need to get the uh, flow uh, between two and 300 milliliters per minute. And then we're going ahead and start it and we'll run some hydrogen through the line for the next uh, 13 or so minutes to get all the air out of the line. And then when this kicks on, we'll see what the purity is. Okay, I'm gonna slowly turn the valve, the ball valve, until I see the little ball in the flow meter start to move. There we go. Trying to get that flow right. And that looks like it'll work. There, you can see the flow there. Okay, we'll wait the uh, 12 minutes and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna cut the video until then. Okay, the analyzer just kicked on and this is why we have an analyzer, guys. Even though we thought we got all the air out of this tank, we actually didn't. So that's why you need an analyzer before you start compressing because that is um, borderline dangerous right there. About 94. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty out all the hydrogen in this tank and we're gonna go ahead and fill it back up again to 20 PSI and we'll do another test. Okay, we're now up to 98.62, which is high enough to compress. I actually had to empty this tank three times and refill it because it started out about 95, then I emptied it out and it was about 96 and a half, right around there, and I emptied it out again, and now it's 98.6. I assume that if I keep emptying the tank out and refilling it, I'll get about like 99.9 at some point, but I'm gonna recommend that we go out and purchase a adequate vacuum pump instead of this compressor. It's not taking enough out of there. It's not adequate for drawing enough vacuum and getting all the air out of the tank first. So in a later video, I'll go and purchase a good vacuum pump and we'll see uh, what the purity of the hydrogen is right after filling it one time uh, using a proper vacuum pump. So we have the purity up above 98%, 98.62. So what I'm gonna do now in the next video is I'm gonna go ahead and compress up to 50 PSI into the tank. And then I'm gonna take our compressor here and I'm gonna compress what's in the large tank, the larger tank into this smaller tank. And I'm gonna see if I can get it up to about 100, 130 PSI. And then we'll go, uh, we'll go hook it up to a grill, cook some steaks. That was my goal starting out this years ago, just to get a system that I could use to compress hydrogen so that I could use the gas for something practical for everyday use and sh show that that could be done and it could be done at home. So we'll compress this into this tank and we'll go cook some steaks on my grill. And we'll do it in the next video. Okay, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.